What's up, everybody? This is Talking All That Kaz, and I am DJ Casio. I want to thank you for checking out this particular episode of Talking All That Kaz. On this particular episode, I got another great interview that I conducted here on my radio show at 90.9 FM KCC in Salinas, California. But before we get going with that, I want you to go to this address, djcasio.com, and connect with me on social media whether it's on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my Twitter, or even if you go and subscribe to my Mixcloud channel, you can hear all my radio shows that I do in their entirety, music, commentary, and interviews. But this right here, talking all that Kaz, this is for just the interviews, okay? I want to thank everybody who checked out the first round of interviews that I put up. Now we're on to the second round. This particular round, I'm going to focus on 2019, but I'm going to sprinkle it in with some more current stuff too. So you never know what you're going to get. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy another edition of Talking All That Kaz with me, DJ Casio. That's right, that's right. We're back in the place right here. It's 90.9 FM, KHDC, Radio Bilingue, in Salinas, Monterey, and Santa Cruz, 104.1 FM, Hollister, San Juan Batista, and South Gilroy, and streaming live everywhere on the planet. You know the deal. WednesdayRec.com is where you can check it out. Joining me right now, very special guest, uh, hasn't been on the show in a number of years, way back when, I believe it was 2003, the first time I had this young lady on the phone, uh, Miss Kyla Yu. How are you, Kyla? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm I'm very well. I'm very well. So let, let's let's go back. Uh, I first met you. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not in any way expecting you to remember this, but it was at a car show in San Jose, and um, I was like one of a thousand dudes in line to get a picture. Um, you know, <laughs> had to, had to get up there and take a picture with the lovely one. Um, at around that time, you were, I believe, working with the Import Jams um, compilation. Oh, yeah. And um, at the time, you had a song called More and More on their compilation, which is kind of why I, I reached out to you and had you on the show You know, around that time to talk about the compilation. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got started in modeling and um, how you transitioned into working in music. Well, I mean, what's really interesting is that now, I'm going to get deep, but like, when I was growing up, the only real Asian idol to look up to was Sung Hee Lee. She was like a Playboy model. Right. And um, I just wanted to be like her. So um, I searched out all the calendars and magazines that she was in, and I submitted to them. And the import scene was blowing up at this time. Mm -hmm. Um what I'm really glad to see now is that um, it's not only a Playboy model that Asian women can look up to. Now we have like Asian girls, like Instagram stars, or you know, um, the movie that just came out, which name is escaping me at the moment. Cra <laughs> the all Asian romance. Crazy rich Asians. Yes, yes. Like they have other idols to look up to except just the Playboy models. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but just that there's more variety. Right, right. Now, you know, you, you started the modeling, uh, you, you said, you know, with aspirations to be like um, the other female, which you name. I'm sorry, I, I forgot the name. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, you you did that for for a while, you know, you, you did some stuff and then, you know, you transitioned into music. Um, you, you started what you got the group going Nylon Pink. Tell me about Nylon Pink. Oh, Nylon Pink was so much fun. That was my passion project. And I had been a solo music artist for many years before that on MySpace and with the Import Jams. And I just so much enjoyed working in a group of girls. There are five of us. Two of them are still my best friends. And we got to tour all around the world, which is how I kind of caught the traveling bug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, one of the re well, what's the primary reason why you're calling in uh, tonight? You uh, so after Nylon Pink um, sort of ran its course, I guess you would say, you've now transitioned into uh, being an author. Um, tell me about the uh, you know how how the book came together, how you thought of the um, the concept, and um, you know that that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, um, when the music career ended, because it's very hard to make money in a band, uh, and it's so sad because rock music is kind of dead these days, mm -hmm. but um, I knew that I had discovered a love for traveling, so I started travel writing, and I started um, just traveling to write about my experiences and blog and capture my experiences. And then we came across a statistic that 41% of Americans believe that they can't afford to travel, which I found really sad because right now in this time of kind of, uh, we need more compassion for other cultures. And the only way to really get that is by traveling, I mm. think. And travel is accessible if you plan for it. It's not as inaccessible as people think so we came up with this challenge so people could plan to have travel in their lives and plan their dream vacations or just uh, plan a quick getaway right you know what what's crazy is one of the facts I, I as I was skimming through the information you sent me about the book it, it was crazy to me that in 2017 over 705 million vacation days were wasted by Americans just because, as you said, they feel like, oh, I don't have the money to travel. Yeah, and we just don't have it ingrained in our culture. In Europe, you know, they have siestas and they have ample, ample vacation days, and it's no big deal. You need to take vacation. And in America, we have kind of a workaholic culture, so it's almost sometimes looked down upon, you know, somebody at your work taking a vacation. Right. So we need to kind of change our idea because it's healthy to recharge and take time off. Well, I, I definitely can tell you I haven't had a vacation in about three years, so I'm definitely due for one. Uh, oh, you need to take the challenge. <laughs> I know, right? So I, I'm look I'm looking at the um the the outline, I guess, kind of the book. So each chapter is basically um uh, a uh, a uh, a tip for uh, each each the thirty days prior to taking the vacation, correct? Yes. So people get really confused about the first week of the challenge because it has a lot of stuff like learn how to meditate, try meditating, mm -hmm. try journaling, and it's a lot of mindset things. But I believe that um, there's a lot of self-limiting beliefs that keep people from traveling, and those need to be kind of broken down, and you kind of need to build a foundation before you get to the nuts and bolts of, say, okay, now I'm going to research and budget my vacation. Mm -hmm. So we start off with kind of building a mental foundation the first week. Right, right. One of the things I noticed in the um, the first uh, uh, list of for the first week, now be a local tourist. What exactly does that mean? So here's the thing. When we say travel, we always think international, far-flung destinations. Hmm. But, like, I travel all around the world, and I don't stop and think that people all around the world want to come to Los Angeles. And how much time do I spend exploring California, which is a dream destination for so many people? And even if you're in a tiny town in Iowa, there's really probably cool architecture to see or histor historical uh, buildings. So it just means getting out into your town and getting to know it better because most people probably haven't explored it to the fullest. Or, or just even natural landscapes. Yeah, so much beauty like all around us that we just drive by and don't appreciate. Right, right. Um, you know, talk to me. I mean, I, I noticed that there's also a note in here, too, about the connection between physical and mental wellness and travel. Um, you know, how important is that? And what role do you see travel playing in being healthy physically and mentally? Well, wellness is a huge trend these days, and wellness travel even is a really fast-growing segment of the travel industry. But as for wellness, it just goes back to taking time off. I think when you travel to a new destination, it gets you out of your regular stream of thought so you can be more creative. You can come back, recharge with different ideas, and just get out of your daily grind of stress. Because when I am, you know, flying out somewhere, I forget about all the silly little daily troubles of my daily life. Is, is that is that your preferred method of uh, travel, transportation, flying, or do you like, you know, cruises or, you know, drive, take a long drive? What, what's the deal? 
I do like flying, but I love cruises also. Okay. I am definitely a cruise junkie. Okay, got <laughs> I just you. like being on a boat where like you can go eat whatever you want at any time and like yeah, I love food being available. Right. At the time. You know, it, it's um, it, it's a little um, it, it's timely right now. This book, um, because you know, there's been a lot of uh, controversy lately, um, with traveling to the Dominican Republic. You know, people are dying over oh, there. Yeah. Um, you know, what what are some of the um, ne- such as what's happening in Dominican Republic? Some of the negative aspects of travel that people can avoid if they just are aware. Well, I always advise doing a number of. Uh, research activities before traveling to a destination like i would not go to the dominican republic at this very moment until i figured out what was going on i would actually cancel my vacation plans there because every day there's a new report of a new person but another source is that you can go to travel.safe.gov and they give you different level advisories per destination so if i remember correctly like a level one or two is okay. I might be totally messing this up. And a level three or four is not good. It'll stay on there. Right. Which one's good or bad. But you should definitely take a look on that website before going to see if there's any political unrest or anything you should be watching out for. Right. How much, uh, how much, you know, in a, in a, in a safe, um, in, in a just, how, how can I put this? Uh, how much time would you say you put into the re- the physical research? I mean, i.e., how much time traveling did you spend? You know, uh, putting this this book together. Oh, that was compiled from probably years of travel. But um, as for research for each trip, it really depends. Sometimes I'll dive deep into research for a location that I want to try all the different best food, street food, and restaurants at. And sometimes I'll just pop over somewhere and discover it as I go. Just depends on what mood I'm in. Right. You know, I, I noticed one other thing here before, um, you know, I'm not going to keep you too long, but I noticed one other thing here I wanted to uh, pick your brain about, and it says explore vagabonding. What exactly is vagabonding, and is it, it, it sounds dangerous. <laughs> so I don't actually um, do that because I, I like having a home base, mm. but I have so many friends who, oh, my friend had a word for it. They just don't have a home. They'll go, you know, live in uh, the Caribbean for two weeks and then find a home base in Budapest. So it's kind of just finding work as you go. They'll maybe, like, live on a farm in Greece and work there for a month. So it's kind of just, like, big about is not having a home base and wandering the world. So, so it's basically kind of like going and like working for uh, a refuge. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that, that's a, that's done a, that before, like on a volunteer basis, but not having no home. I always like to have a home. <laughs> See, I, I don't know if I'd want to include that in my travel because the whole point of taking a trip is to get away from work and relax. I don't want to go somewhere and have to still work. <laughs> yeah. Those definitely these are there's a certain class of people I think who want to be full time travelers. So um, that's probably a very small percentage of the population, but there's definitely a passionate group of people for that kind of lifestyle. Right, right. Uh, now, how, how did you uh, get connected with your writing partner Kiki Wong? Well, she was actually my bandmate, so <laughs> she, she's one of my best friends. Okay. So we've okay. Together since Smile on Pink. And um, we'll be together for many years after this. I'm yeah. sure. Got you. Got you. Now, if people want to, I mean, obviously we want people to purchase this book. It's available, I believe, on Amazon and, and all those spaces, right? Yeah, Amazon's the easiest place. And it's just called the 30-Day Travel Challenge. If you search that, you'll find it. Right. And then, okay, if people want to catch up with you on social media, I mean, that's what everybody's into now. So uh, go ahead and give me some social media links. So you can just find me, my name, Kyla U on everything. So that's K-A-I-L-A-Y-U. Uh, and that's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everything, right? Yeah. Uh, what, what what about a, What about a YouTube channel? Do you do any like uh, post up any like travel videos or anything like that? 
has some travel on our YouTube channel, Nylon Pink Official. So we just took our music channel and we just converted it. Is there uh, is there any um, any possibility of uh, following up and going back to uh, revisit some of the music stuff? Yeah, I'd love to do that sometime. Well, there you go, there you go, and and of course, modeling is still on the table, right? No. <laughs> really? Well, I go to different locations and I shoot myself in different locations, but I don't really call it modeling because. I, I, about the location. I think it's time to sign the petition to get the 2020 Kyla U calendar back in uh, in a uh, in effect. <laughs> I think we need one of those. I, I'm too tired. Wow. <laughs> that takes a lot of energy to model and be all wearing tight clothing, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, all bohemian and loose. Thing. it's all good it's all good well hey you, you know what i i definitely uh recommend this book as i said I, I skimmed through it and i know and i see there's a lot of good information in there um it, it, it's definitely you know helping and i agree you know you need to plan things out before you just say oh you know what i'm just gonna get away for the weekend you you shouldn't do that you should think about it and um you know because you don't want to get caught out there you don't want to you know have something bad happen yeah definitely if you are more new to traveling do your research and be prepared and then have fun exactly last question of all the places you've traveled where's your favorite well i'm biased because i'm from taiwan so it's definitely taipei but for a second location i would say i absolutely fell in love with vietnam and i I didn't expect to right do you could you ever see yourself living there like permanently I could see myself having a house there, but I, I'm an L.A. girl at heart. Okay. Always, this will always be my home. That's that's right. There you go. West coast to the fullest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Kyla, I really appreciate you taking the time to call in tonight. Um, you know, you're you're more than welcome. Anytime you have something to promote, I would love to have you back on to, you know, catch up and, um, you know, keep people aware of what exactly it is going on with you, you know? Yeah, thank you so much. Well, you know what? Let's uh, let's go back uh, in the days, as they say. Go back to uh, import jams, and let's hear a little bit of more oh, and more. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Keep it right here. This is 90.9 FM KHDC.